Hi, I'm Kevin Perry and uh, I'm going to do a review today of this Chibson Les Paul Custom. Uh, this guitar was described as a 50th, 1960 50th anniversary model. Um, should say, first off, I got it from a DH Gate, a uh, seller called Muso Guitars. Um, the first thing I should say is it had a problem with it. The binding I think had shrunk possibly and uh, a groove had opened up along on the on the, on the edge of the of the of the fret where it meets the guitar where the binding meets the guitar. Uh, and you can actually get your fingernail in it. Uh, and whilst it doesn't affect the sixth string at all, uh, it did affect the first string and what would happen uh, is that the, the string would jump off the fret and stick in this in this groove. Uh, part of the problem was the nut was cut wrong. Uh, the the first string slot was too near the, the the edge of the fingerboard. It made the string very close to the edge of the fingerboard, uh, and it would jump off the fret uh, and stick in this little groove that was along alongside of it. Um, I think the binding is not right because it, it doesn't seem to come on top of the frets. I'm not sure how it's supposed to come but it's actually slightly lower than the fret so the string if you force it can still jump off the fret but now I've replaced this nut that, that doesn't actually happen whilst you're playing anymore before when the nut was faulty it actually happened while you were playing and it was made the guitar useless really I filled the, the, the gap with some sort of uh, two part metal putty that you just mix up and just squeeze it in very simple job only took me a few minutes to do it just squeezed in it, it's set in about two minutes and, and it's been perfect ever since. Um, the one obvious uh, giveaway is the size of the logo on the on the custom. It's a little bit too small, so that's that's a dead giveaway. A uh, nice Gibson logo other than that. Hope you can see it. I'm not quite sure where the camera is, is on that one. Um, Fake Grover machine heads, which I must say are, are, are great, they really work brilliantly. Uh, fake serial number made in USA, which of course it isn't. Um, right, what else can I say? Uh, lovely neck on it. I, I don't know what uh, the wood, the timber was supposed to be mahogany. Obviously, I can't tell if there's how many pieces it's made of or anything, but. It's it looks good. It looks nice. Oh, the, the other thing it's got on the on the uh, bottom of the headstock is this other Gibson logo there. I must admit, um, I I had one of these guitars in 1974, a real Gibson, uh, and it's it's you know it's pretty comparable looks wise anyway and play playability wise. Um, it plays nice. N now I've fixed those faults. It does play. Pretty nice, and it and it tunes up wonderfully. Um, the pickups, I like the sound of them. The 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 the, the suit my style of playing. Uh, I never play on overdrive, so it's not a problem. But I have tried them on overdrive, and they do feedback like crazy. So you know, if you're a rock guitarist or something, it it it, it, it you'd have to change the pickups. I haven't changed anything on it other than those two little jobs that I've mentioned. I, you know, I haven't changed the controls. Uh, the metal work is is okay. I mean, uh, I have messed about with the setup an awful lot, but I, I've got it now to where I, I sort of really like it, uh, and the intonation is is wonderful. Um, I would say this actually tunes up just as well as my. My original 1974 Gibson. Uh, I'll just uh, have a look at my list, see what other things I've got to mention. Um, fingerboard, well, it's supposed to be ebony. 
I don't know if it is ebony. I, I, I somehow don't think it is ebony. It's just some sort of dark wood. Uh, the frets are a little bit hard, and when I actually got got it, the the edges of the fingerboard were quite sharp. It was pretty uncomfortable to play. So, but I've just rounded that off with some wire wool, and it's it's lovely to play now. But it was quite sharp, and. I don't know what it is, whether the frets are quite high or big frets, I don't know what it is, but it, it can sometimes feel a little bit a bit hard on your fingers. Uh, jack socket is just a, an ordinary plastic sort of affair, but it's quite adequate, it holds, stays in there nicely. Uh, it cost um, about, about £200, including import duties. Um, <clears throat> I think I said it was uh, supposed to be a uh, 1960, 1960-50th anniversary model. I'll just take you through the pickups. Okay, the rhythm pickup. Sorry. So it's got a few fret buzzes. As I say, I've messed around with the action quite a bit. This is sort of how I like like it to play. Uh, I don't know whether I'll be able to get rid of some of those fret buzzes. I probably probably can. Um, probably going to do a bit more playing about with it. I don't think I'll bother changing the pickups because as I say I'm quite happy with the sound that I get off and, and the sort of music I play. I'd never play on overdrive so but they do they do scream like hell when you when you when you put it on overdrive. Uh, there's, it's a fairly weighty guitar. Uh, 
yeah, maybe not quite as heavy as a, a real Gibson, but uh, still heavy enough. I don't think there's anything else I can say about it. Let me just see if I put anything else down. The finish on it, well, it looks pretty good. It looks pretty good. It didn't have any real flaws or marks that I could spot anyway, you know, but I dare say it just depends on how, how, uh, how fussy you are, but for a couple of hundred quid, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a good guitar. Certainly comparable to something like an Epiphone, without a doubt. Uh, it's equally as good as, if not better than, uh, other than the pickups. Uh, other than uh, the, other than some of the Epiphones I've tried, and as I said, the machine heads are absolutely fabulous. They're really good. So, uh, okay. I hope this has been a bit of interest to anybody. I'll just play you out a bit of blues, perhaps. <laughs>